XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. There's the M, there's the L, where's the X? It's right there, the second letter in Extensible. And it's a shareable file between different programs. For example, if you have Excel and somebody else has a different database program and you want to be able to share your data between the two, chances are if you do it directly, they might have a fit because of the different formatting between the two programs. So you can export the data from Excel or the other program into an XML file that will strip it down to the raw data where it doesn't contain any formatting, where it uses tags or a set of rules, which is a separate file known as schemas. And they have a .xsd extension and is a set of rules that tells what kind of data or fields are and can be used in an XML file. So the XML file contains raw data like a client's first name, last name, phone number, and so forth. And the second file, the schemas, is a set of rules that tells what kind of fields are available to dump the raw data into. Because if certain fields aren't available, then you can't pull in that data from that XML file. And I've got two examples to show you. Let me go ahead and minimize that down to the taskbar. I've got my schema and customers. I named it schema so you can see if you can't see the extensions on your computer, like the .xsd for schemas or the .xml for, well, the XML file, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions and be able to learn how to view them, to hide them, and also how to be careful so you don't change the extensions for your files. And if you do, how to go ahead and change them back. In any case, I've got the two here, so here's the raw data. Let me go ahead and double click to open it up to show you it. And you can see it begins up at the top, XML version, the customer info, and we're looking at the customer address. And then down below we have a total of one, two, three customers with their street, city, state, and zip. And then you can see what are known as tags here begins with the name and then it closes the backslash with the name. So when you see that, the backslash at the end with the same name as in this case as the beginning, that's where it ends. So the name is dot .warner, opens with street, at the end it closes with street, so everything in between those two tags is the street and the city and so on. So there's the raw data. Let's go ahead and close out and open up the schema to see if it allows us to pull in city, state, zip code. And if you double click on it, well, my computer says, I don't know what this file is. So let's go ahead and click cancel and, and open up notepad. And it's right there. Go ahead and click on it. And then we'll go file to open, browse to the desktop. Well, I'm on the desktop. And then we got to change it from text documents to all files. So we can actually see, there we go, schema.xsd. Double click. And there it is. We've got the customer info broken down to the customer address, and then we have the fields that includes the name, street, city, state, and zip for the elements. You could go ahead and remove the zip code, in which case you couldn't import the raw data that contains the zip because there's no field to hold it. So we'll keep it there because I want to import the zip. Now as far as setting this up, it's easy to save your workbook into an XML file, but for the set of rules, well, we'll leave that up to the IT people. I just want to keep it simple here and show you that when you get two of these files and you want to be able to import these two into your worksheet, well, this is how you do it. Let's go ahead and open up Excel. Double click. So we need to import the rules first before we send all the kitties into the playroom and start tearing the place apart. Well, they won't have anywhere to go without the set of rules. So to do this, we need to be able to bring up the Developer tab. And if you don't see it up on the ribbon, it's not installed by default, so right-click anywhere on the ribbon. Go down to Customize the Ribbon. And then go ahead and find it and check Developer. Click Okie Dokie. Then click on the Developer tab. And there we go, XML. In the group, you want to go ahead and click on the Source button. opens up the Task pane. And then down below and to the right, click on XML Maps. And then we need to add one, which is going to be our schemas. Click on Add. Find it on the desktop. There it is, Schema Schema. Double click. And there we go. And if you can't see it, the full name, the root name, then just hover in between the two column headers until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and double click really fast to do a best fit. Or you can just go ahead and click and drag. Click and drag. And the name is Customer Info, Mapping, and then the root is Customer Information. When you're done, just go ahead and click Okie Dokie. It adds it over to the right and you can see the fields that are available to pull the raw data into that's been set up by the schema for the set of rules it includes ID, name, street, city, and so on. Now before we can go ahead and import this, these fields are just sitting out here. We need to go ahead and pull them into the spreadsheet so we can import the data into the spreadsheet. 
I recommend don't clicking and dragging in here one at a time because if you do that, well, let me click off. You see these little blue tick marks in the bottom right hand corner of each of these fields? That identifies that field as its own table. And so you can run into problems with that when you select it and you come up to its related contextual design tab and you want to work with it like maybe a quick style here and you want to change the color. You see how it just affects the one? Let me click on it and it doesn't update the other. Let me go ahead and undo that. Well, you may say big deal. The problem with this is that if later on you decide to export this and they're not all together, then the data won't be structured in such a way that it'll be easy for the other person to import it into their database. Basically, it'll be a mess, so I don't recommend doing that. Let me go ahead and select the range here and delete the fields. And then instead, select the first field, hold down the control key, and select the additional fields. And then with them all selected, go ahead and click and drag the selection. You can put it wherever you want. I'm going to dump mine in the first cell, A1, and let go and click off. You can see the blue tick mark there in the bottom right-hand corner for the entire range. So when I select it, and then come up here to Table Styles, click on the drop-down arrow, and select one, it updates all the fields because it sees them all as one within a table. And now to import the raw data, come back up here, click on the Developer tab, go to the XML group, and click on Import. We're ready. Right on the desktop, there's the customers. Double click. Hey, there they are, all three, right in there. Of course, make sure you've got the cells selected. Otherwise, you won't be able to import them into the range here. And then if you want to go ahead and add more while you're at it, hit the Tab key, opens up a new row, or we can go ahead and hit Undo. You can right-click on the last row. Go down to insert. I mean, it's just like the tables training video because it is a table. You can watch that to learn how to import rows above, below, delete rows. Let's do row below and then go ahead and notice over to the left hand side, we've got the ID column. There's no IDs. It allowed the field to be there, but we didn't have any raw data or ID data in the XML file to be imported. So if you want to get rid of that, then go ahead and click on column A, the letter, so you can select the entire row and then right click on it and say delete and there we go and then you can see over here in the task pane XML source the ID is not in bold because there's no data in it where these others are in bold and as I select them you can see it selects the entire range of the data like for state or zip in any case I digress let's go ahead and enter in somebody and that's it hit enter and we're outside of the table but you can go ahead and add more and more and then when you're done, maybe you want to export this into an XML file. In which case, just come back up here on the Developer tab, go to the XML group, click on Export. And let's call it My Spiffy Happy Go Lucky Clients. Let's go ahead and click Export. And that's it. Of course, let me go ahead and close out of here, and we won't save it. There's my Spiffy Happy Go Lucky Clients, the XML file, but without a set of rules to go with it, well, we'll let the IT people go over that and help you set that up for the rules. Now, the whole purpose of this training video is to actually just learn how to import your rules first so we can structure the place up so then you can have your customers come in and go, wow, what a nice house. There's a place for me to sit right there. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.